taken from the airport in the manner which they did. It was almost, I felt like I'd been kidnapped. They had it in their mind that I was African. And that, that was it, you know, just kept saying, you're African, Senegalese. After asking me three or four times, next thing I saw was a pair of handcuffs being waved in front of me. I felt a, a sense of desperation that I've never felt before, to be honest. And even, I think the first week when they wouldn't give me a phone call to my wife or to the British Embassy, you know, I, I, it was quite frightening. I thought if they wanted to let me vanish from the face of this earth, they could have done it. With prisoners abroad having correspondence with you, made you realise that the authorities have to be aware that somebody who's thinking about you and, and your welfare. It made me feel as if, well, at least somebody knows where I am. My son went on holiday for three days to Dubai. Seven months later, he's still there. When I contacted prisoners abroad, I was deranged and they managed to calm me down. They spent at least an hour on the telephone to me and I shared some quite graphic information with them and they didn't flinch. He was tortured. He was tasered. He was refused water. And in the initial stages, every conversation I had with my son was him begging me for water. As a mother, that broke my heart. Prisoners abroad were literally a lifeline. The first jail that we were sent to was a maximum security prison. Absolutely scary. I've, I've never known anything so... I was terrified. We'd been strip searched twice. We'd had all our clothes robbed from us. We were then escorted to the cell itself, uh, which was underground. It was like some version of hell, like Dante's Inferno. There was just this clattering and shouting and, and screaming. It's like a mad monkey house. And you just think, my God, what have, what have I let myself in for here? We, we were shattered, you know. And I said, well, which is my bunk? And they said, well, you don't have one. So I said, well, where do I sleep tonight? And they said, well, on the floor. Uh, and I slept on the floor for seven months. The worst part of it was, you know, what I, you know, you expect your freedom to be taken away from you when you're in prison. You, you, you commit the crime, you do the time. But, you know, they actually took away your dignity because the partitions where the toilets were, they only had three foot walls. So when you're squatting down in these holes in the ground doing your ablution, you had a chap right there doing his washing. You had another chap washing his plates. You had another chap right next to you. So whilst you're squatting, they're watching you, you're watching them. And he's showering and just pouring a bucket of water over his head because that's all you could do. Then you'd wash your hands in this trough and everybody is now taking water and drinking it from that trough. I mean, I spent a long time um, in well, a prison hospital where nobody spoke English. And that was like being solitary. With the prisoners abroad, it was wonderful because we had Reader's Digest that they sent us, some newspapers, um, the newsletter. That oh, was just a, such a lifeline to England. We'd laugh over the jokes. It, it was just, well, it just kept us going. We also got what was really badly needed because we were I was always full of flu and colds, and you know they supplied us with vitamins, which was fantastic. And I think without those vitamins, I think we'd be—I would have been a lot more, well, I would have been a lot more ill. Prisoners abroad give my son thirty-five pounds a month. To have that small grant meant that he could have his independence. He had access to buy luxuries like water. He could also buy phone cards to keep contact home. They gave me some money towards the cost of a flight and I was able to go 
and see my son. Without that funding, I wouldn't have been able to have gone. So I can't thank Prisoners Abroad enough for that. On my 59th birthday, uh, I didn't receive a, a birthday card from my mum or my sister or my daughter and son. And it since transpired after that that I, I received a letter from them and they'd sent me a birthday card, my family, all my family, uh, with some money in it. But that was stolen by the guards. But the one card I did get was from prisoners abroad. And <coughs> it had all the signatures on and well wishes, you know, from all the prisoners abroad staff. And it was just so wonderful that on my birthday, that somebody cared. I did 20 years, two months, 15 days. You know, when you spend that much time in an eight by 10 cell and you're basically isolated from society, you don't really know what the outside world's gonna be like and you become fearful of leaving. Well, if prisons abroad didn't exist, I don't know where I would be right now. I certainly wouldn't be in the situation I'm in right now where I have a stable living environment and a job and, and I'm on my way to being an independent, self-sufficient person. If they weren't there for me, if prisons abroad wasn't there for me, I would have been completely lost. The first day I went to prisons abroad, I showed up early because I didn't know what to expect. You know, I, I, I wasn't sure if I would get there on time. and. I was there like an hour before they even opened. So I just put my little backpack on the stairs and I was just sitting there and then someone came into the office and they're like, well, we don't open till 10 o'clock, but come on in, have a cup of tea. And it kind of hit me, wow, I can have a cup of tea. Um, they treated me like a regular person. They treat you with dignity too. And that's one of the first things that I felt when I first got there to that office that first day. They, the resettlement officer just looked at me and she, uh, she she treated me really well, you know. Uh, yeah, sorry. You know, they, uh, they're good people. I don't know where I'd be without prisoners abroad. You have given me not only my sanity back, but the strength of a mother to go on supporting my son through this ordeal. Anybody that supports prisoners abroad supports vulnerable people, and I was a vulnerable person. Prisoners Abroad was a lifeline and I really do appeal to anybody who's watching this to help as much as you can to those prisoners worldwide who are desperate and need the care that Prisoners Abroad can do. Thank you.